While you're standing, I'll read one scripture, amen, then I'll let you be seated this morning. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says, come on, y'all can quote this one with me. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Amen? Four very important things. The apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Amen? I believe that God wants to speak to you this morning about what part you play in that, in that scripture right there. We are very familiar with the few up front of that. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We're very familiar with that. But we know that's their birth certificate. That's just the birth certificate. We gotta, we gotta graduate some people. We gotta get some people to their diploma. Amen. And we do that by the apostles' doctrine, by fellowship, by breaking bread, and by prayers. Amen. And I believe that we're, we're, we're set up for it. I believe God's got us in the right place in Jesus' name. Thank you. You may be seated. Oh, you know what I didn't say, and that I should, and that is we ought to war- give our, all of our guests a warm welcome this morning. We're so glad that you're here today. I uh, thank you for coming today. We, we want you to connect with us. This church has, uh, in, in the last three years, even with COVID raging, we moved forward in some fantastic ways. We've reached some new heights as a church body. And we can trace some of this back even pre-COVID because I believe that during COVID, one of the things that helped us to navigate and to move forward and to go through that without losing but rather gaining, uh, I believe that it was because of the thing that we have established here called reach groups. Look at your neighbor and say, here we go again. Here we go again. Reach groups, amen? And much of this is what we can say that, that, that has uh, kept us together. These small life groups that people gather together, they, they fellowship together, they break bread together, they pray together. All of these things that we have mentioned already in Acts t- chapter 2 verse 42 is very key uh, and, a very, uh, and is an element that's used in our reach groups. We have reach groups that that follow through with every piece of that scripture, that teach the doctrines, that teach pray, that pray together, that, that fellowship together, that break bread together. So we are thankful this morning that this, uh, this uh, tire that's on our car, we got four tires on our car, I'll get there in a minute, but, but this is one of the main tires on our car. And if Reed's groups gets flat or comes off the car, the car's not going anywhere, right? We're not going to go where God has called us to go. But I am, uh, I am talking to you this morning, and I want to say uh, that I am so sold out to what God has done through this church and through people in this church through reach groups. Amen? We have a funnel. Just imagine a funnel. At the top of the funnel is the widest piece. And, and you used to be our worship services. Like, that was our widest piece of evangelism. Like, if we could just get somebody to come to church with us. And we found out that a lot of times people are a little hesitant, a little resistant about walking into a Pentecostal church or uh, one that has a label, Church of Pentecost, out there on the sign. They're a little, they're a little inhibited to walk in to that church initially. But we know what kind of church we have. We know what kind of church family we have. We're, we're not just a normal church. We're a very friendly church. And we, uh, we don't take us long to get into your life. So just be careful if you're a guest today. We'll be right up on you. We'll, we'll sneak in there fast, I'm telling you. But we're, we're not trying to do that. We just want to reach people. And we have a heart for people. And we have a heart for God. And we have a heart for what God is calling us to do. And reach groups is one of the ways that we have expanded that funnel. We have made that funnel wider because now we are in houses, we're in restaurants, uh, we're in coffee shops, we're in libraries, we're in uh, fields and, and, and in basketball courts and, 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 uh, and all kind of places and golf courses and all, all kind of places where we have expanded our footprint that we can be bigger and broader than just the top, which is a normal worship service. Amen. So I want to read a statement this morning. A very impactful statement. I hope that it is something that just gets in your head and begins to ring for you in the days to come. Can you put it up there for me? Y'all got it this morning? Bigger is not always better. 
But death is worse. Bigger's not always better, but death is worse. We have to keep the church alive. The church has got to be alive this morning. I'm not here to just try to make the church bigger. I'm just here to make sure that the church doesn't die. Amen. It can't die on our watch. It, it, it can't go on life support during our watch. It, it can't go and it, it cannot decease on our watch. Amen. So when I'm talking about some of these things, Pastor, you just want us to be bigger. Yeah, I do. I want us to be better. Yes, I do. But the main thing is, I just want to keep us alive because that's what God has intended. Amen. If we stay alive, then everything else will work out. Amen. Amen. What kind of church decides that we've had enough outreach? Amen. When a church decides it's had enough outreach, it becomes a spiritual problem. That is not a logistical or a tangible problem. This is a spiritual problem. Let's break it down to me and you. When me and you decide, I don't have to do outreach anymore. I don't have to evangelize anymore. That's not my job. That's somebody else's job. You are falling into the trap. And it's not a tangible problem. And it's not a logistical problem. I got introverts and I got extroverts in this place. But every one of us are called to evangelize. You may be called and gifted to evangelize differently than somebody else is, but every one of us in this room, you are called to be a missionary. You're called to be an evangelist. You're called to go and be and make disciples. That's your call this morning. Amen. If you've been saved, God didn't save you to seat you. He didn't save you to get your chair and your seat and to stay there and remain. God saved you so that you could serve. God saved you so that you could reach another person. God needed you because you are the link to the next person that's going to need and receive salvation in their life. This is none of my notes. I'm sorry. I'm way off this morning. But, but I'm just, I'm just kind of launching out into the deep this morning. There's just a heaviness in my heart today because I know we're headed into fall semester. I know we're headed to fall reach groups. And, and this is such a burden for us. And I'm going to tell you, reach groups are not easy. We try to make it, make it real pretty and make it look real fun. And it is fun. And it's exciting. And it's good. But it's work. It's going to take you, make you have to designate a night out of the week that you've got to go and lead or attend or be a big part of a reach group. But soul winning is not easy. If it was, everybody would be doing it, right? But the devil has got busyness, distraction, all of these things in front of people's lives. And we are the church. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. And there are lost people that are weighing in the balance today. And one of us in this room is the link to that next person. You are the link to them. Amen. Bill Hennard said this. Why would we not want the church? Why would we not want the church to reach those who do not know Christ and those who are in need of spiritual growth to the point that it reflects in our attendance. Hear me this morning, we have to reach the lost. Amen. In Luke, Jesus goes through the three categories of lost. I'm going to flip them just a little bit. At the, and the last one he talked about was the lost son. And the lost son, it says this, And when he had came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to, and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no, worth, no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. There are some lost people this morning. There are prodigals. There are sons and our daughters that have been in the church, that walked away from the church, but they know where the ch church is. They know where the steeple is. They know where the house of God is. Amen? Let's talk about the lost son. The lost son is lost. They know they are lost, and they know what to do about it. Amen. 
We've got to reach those people. Sister Barbara has a, has a prodigals group. We'll, we'll be talking about that when we regroup. And, and it's, it's a text team that, that prays for prodigals. It's, it's a team that continually prays for prodigals. She's got a burden for prodigals. And we've got to reach our prodigals. But let's be honest. They, they're lost. They know they're lost. And they know what to do about it. There's another group. It's the lost sheep. He says, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? You see, here's the difference about the lost son and the lost sheep. The, lost, the sheep is lost. He knows he's lost, but he don't know what to do about it. He, can't, he, he has to have a shepherd. Somebody has to come find the lost sheep. The son knows where the daddy's house is. He knows to get up and go home. The sheep could be in peril. He could be stuck in a, in a craggy place and, 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 and a foot has fell over into a, a, a hole in a, in a crevice where he, he can't get out. Uh, you know, we don't know what his issue is, but somehow he strayed a little far and he didn't see when everybody else left and, he, and, he, and he's lost, but he don't know how to get back. We've got to find the lost sheep. Amen? And then the lost coin. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it. Here's the, pe- here's the difference in those people. They are lost. They don't know they're lost. And they sure don't know what to do about it. I love this analogy. But I want to tell you something this morning. We have reach groups. Amen? How do we reach the lost? We evangelize, right? We can't just be here for ourselves, Church of Pentecost. We can't just be a church of preferences. We can't just be a church that says this is how we do church and we don't do it any other way. We got to go out and reach the the lost sons. We got to reach the lost sheep. We got to find the lost coins. Amen. That's three different categories of people that are out there. And we have to go evangelize and to reach them. We exist for our non members this morning. Amen. We can't just be a maintenance program here this morning. It takes evangelism. It takes proclaiming the good news of the gospel. It's building a house. Who's the foundation of this? Jesus Christ. What are the walls? Our doctrines, our theology, our study of the word, that builds the walls. What's the roof? The roof is evangelism. And the evangelism is what holds all the walls together. Come on, this morning, we got to keep building the roof. Amen? we got to keep putting a roof over this thing. We have to keep an ongoing process of evangelism. Can I tell you three things about evangelism this morning? Number one, evangelism is public. Evangelism is public. It is inspiring to see pub- people publicly profess their belief. Amen? This morning, I believe that God is calling us to evangelism because it's needed to be out there. It doesn't need to just be in here. Well, I know where I'm at, and I'm letting my light shine. I'm not putting a bushel over. I understand. That's good. And I've lived that same way. I've tried to do some personal evangelism just by letting my light shine in in, uh, in and around people. But that's not just good enough anymore. Sometimes we've got to go public. Amen? We've got to let the world know. And evangelism is, is, that, is, that, is what we have to do. It's what God's called us to do. And guess what a vehicle helps us to do that? Reach groups. Reach groups let me go public with my faith. Reach groups let, allow me to get into a setting where I can publicly let people know, this is what I think, this is what I believe, this is how I believe God wants to touch your life. I believe God wants to take you to a next step. I believe God has something more for you. And the only way I can get them in that public place is to say, you know what, I'm going to do something in my house. I'm going to do something under the pavilion. I'm going to do something at the golf course. And while we're there, I'm going to let you know publicly that I have a, a faith in God. And it's what you need. And when you come up against that place in your life and you don't know where to turn, I'm going to be that open door to say, hey, you already heard it from me. This is my public faith. That's what evangelism is. Number two, I'll tell you this, evangelism changes lives. Evangelism changes life. It is life-changing to be in a group or a setting, coffee shop, wherever it might be, and you look that person eye to eye, 
And they begin to see, and they begin to say, you know what, pastor, I'm ready for some change. You know what, uh, reach leader, I, I'm ready for some change. You know what, uh, friend, I, I'm ready for some change in my life. I'm ready to get back to what God has called me to be. I'm ready to, to, to charge again back into what God has got. Maybe it's a lost sheep that you're ministering to. Maybe they didn't know how to get back. Maybe it's a lost son that knows how to get back, and he's, God is using you to draw them there. Maybe it's one that's never heard any of this before and is using you to make that connection to them. I'm here to tell you that evangelism changes lives. Amen? And what vehicle can we use to change lives? Reach groups. Reach groups. Because we know that life change happens in relationships. There will be people that will walk in these doors. They will hear us sing. They'll feel the presence of God. They'll hear a message, and it will change their life forever, and they'll walk away totally changed. But I'm here to tell you, that's not the norm. I'll tell you how they're going to get here first because you've built a friendship with them outside these four walls and they say, you know what, I want to come to your church. I want to come see what you have. I want to get what, some of what you have. Reach groups allow you to see life change happen. People need transformation right now. There are lost sheep. There are lost coins. There are lost sons. And reach groups allows us to navigate into the, each of those areas of lives. And lastly this morning, evangelism brings a revolution. Evangelism brings a revolution. We know when there has been spiritual awakenings in this nation, in this world, it happened with an evangelist that got down on his face and got on his knees and said, God, use me to reach somebody. Use me to touch somebody else. When, when evangelism begins to happen, it creates a revolution that expands the kingdom of God. And reach groups allow a revolution to start for you and then for others. Here's the statistic. I'm going to give it to you. 86% of church members are here today because they were invited by a friend. They didn't see our social media. They didn't, they didn't get on our website. They didn't just drive down the road and say, oh, that's a pretty place, let's just go in there. 86% that are here this morning are connected here because somebody told you about this church. Another member, another somebody that you were connected with, a friend said, hey, I think you need to go to this place with me. Come on, I'm not saying we can't inv we're going to keep investing in the other areas. We have to do that. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. But hear me this morning. If we're going to grow, if we're going to see the evangelism that God has for us, it's going to come from you and the people that you are linked to. First, you got to have a friend. That'd be a good start for some of you today. Second, they have to belong. Amen? They have to belong. Can they belong to us before they believe everything we believe? Can they belong to us before they behave like we all want them to behave? Or do they have to believe and behave and then belong to us? Not at this place. Amen? We want you to belong here. We want you to come in and know there's a connection to you here. You know what? We're meeting their number one need when they feel like they belong somewhere. We're meeting their number one need. And get this way. Then life change happens. Then life change happens. We have four tires on our car. One is our dream team. I'm so thankful for our volunteers. Our worship services. My word. Even uh, this morning, just the power that was in this place today. In, in worship service, amen? Next steps and more steps and all of the things that we do to help people get to the next place. And the fourth tire is reach groups. And these reach groups, they have set us apart. They have done great things for us. And we have a great vision for them. They're not just another life group. They're not just another small group. These are We call them reach groups for a reason. 
because it is a net for us. It's not just something that we just add to or what we already have. No, it's very important that we have reach groups that are casting this net out as far and as wide as we can. I'm going to go back and use the illustration I used before. It was a, a 10-year-old that had his left arm amputated, and he was uh, a judo expert. He was more determined after that to compete. He practiced one move day after day, week after week, and month after month. After entering the tournament, they were surprised by, he surprised many by advancing to the final, but his final opponent was a strong and well-bodied opponent. But the one-armed boy kept competing until the right moment his move became available. And he executed the move to perfection the opponent could not escape. How did he do it? Others asked two reasons. First, he mastered one of the most difficult moves in judo. And second, the only defense to, uh, against the move was to grab your opponent's left arm. Come on. We have a simple... Biblical, transferable discipleship process at Church of Pentecost. And nobody's exempt from it this morning. I need you. I need every one of you. You may have been here for two weeks. You may have been here for 200 years. I need you to help us with reach groups. Because it's the mechanism. It's the vehicle. It's the process where we can take people and link them to our church link them to our relationship with God, and link them to God ultimately. Amen? And guess what? We don't have a plan B. Amen? In Wiki Church, Steve Merle said this, we are not committed to getting big or staying small. We're not committed to that. We're not committed to reaching politicians, athletes, or actors. We're not committed to reaching rich people, poor people, or smart people. I think he left the other ones off. We're not committed to prosperity, popularity, or fame. We did not set out to formulate and implement a discipleship strategy to see whether or not it would work. What keeps us at it is not merely a long-term commitment. Hear me. What keeps us at all of this is not merely a long-term commitment, but a lifetime commitment. This is our lifetime commitment. That's what I wake up every day thinking, who can I reach today? Who can I touch today? Who, what other person can I link to somebody else in this church or to a friend of mine that we can connect them again and then find out, guess what? We can connect them to the kind of relationship with God that you have and that I have. And therefore, the way we do that is to reach and reach and reach. Amen? He says we are here to honor God. We're here to make disciples. And we have no plan B. It's plan A. And we're sticking to it. Amen? And we're not giving up. And we're not moving off of that plan. And I know that this morning, God's about to do something special in this place. Brother Jeff has been our REACH group leader. I want to say I'm thankful this man. He's such a high-capacity job that he does in public. He has a public faith, and I give God thanks and glory and praise for that. But I want him to come. He's going to finish this out this morning and tell you some things about REACH groups, and then God's going to do some calling in this place. He called some people in NAYC. He's going to call some people in Ball this morning too. Amen? I believe God's got something great for us today. Towards the end of Jesus' ministry, he looked at the 12 men that had been following him for all those years. And he said, who do men say that I am? And they kind of looked puzzled at each other and <clears throat> started saying some of the things they had heard, you know, a prophet, all these different things. But then he looked back at them in a relational way and said, yeah, but who do you, who do you say I am? And it was then that Peter, who loved Jesus so much, he looked back at him and said, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus looked back at him and said, blessed are you, Simon Peter. Because flesh and blood hadn't revealed that to you. But you know who I am. And then Jesus said a powerful statement that some have gotten wrong through the years, through the decades, through the generations. But he said, 
upon this rock, this revelation of who he is. Jesus gave us a promise. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, why am I saying that this morning? We don't have to worry about building a church. We don't have to worry about building a church. Jesus said, upon the revelation of who he is, he will build the church. And then he commissioned those that had followed him to do what? Go and be and make disciples. That's what we're called to do. Go and be and make disciples, as Pastor said. And the way that we do it here is not something we made up or not something that the, uh, the wiki church pastor made up. Just a couple scriptures past what Pastor read this morning in Acts 2, 46 through 47. Follow me, y'all. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And then the apostles went and did what they were told to do in the book of Acts. It says, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God, having favor with God and with man in our, in our world, in public. And then it says this, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. <laughs> Folks, it is that simple. This isn't an art contest. This is science. He said, upon the revelation of who he is, he will build the church. Then he commissioned those that were following him to go and make disciples. And then he said, when you do it, I'm going to add to the church daily such that we'll be saved. That's powerful words, y'all. So I have, I have a call. Everybody say this. So I'm, I'm just going to go there with you for a couple minutes because everybody in this room, this applies to all of us. Say, I have a calling. I have a commission. Now look at your neighbor and say, you can lead a reach group. Sorry, Sister Faith, I almost said a youth group. You can almost lead a youth group. <laughs> Not everybody can lead a youth group. We got the best person in the world to do that. <laughs> Look at them again. Say, I can lead a reach group. All right, husbands and wives, look at each other. If you're couples together, say, we can host a reach group. Look at your neighbor and say, I can assist leading a reach group. And then look at your neighbor again and say, we exist to reach this world. On the back of your bulletin this morning, there's a bunch of information about our reach groups, how simple it is to be a reach group leader, to help expand the kingdom of God by providing opportunity for relationships to happen. We're not called to build the church. Jesus is going to do that. All we have to do is cast the net so that people know there's a safe place to be. And that may be in our homes. That may be on the golf course. That may be at a restaurant. That may be under the pavilion. Jesus will do it if we are willing to break bread house to house and give people the opportunity to do that. So it's not that hard. We need to understand life change happens in the context of relationships. We've got to have a friend. Eighty six percent. That's a staggering statistic that that's how they're going to get here. It's through somebody inviting them. We're called to be and make disciples. Jesus said how when, when in the book of John, he said, what does it mean to be a disciple? Abide in his word, love others and bear much fruit. That's the combination. We're going to have reach groups where we talk about and study the word in the context of some of our hobbies and the things that we enjoy doing. We're going to love people as much as we love God because that's why he came, because he loved people. And when we do that, we are going to bear much fruit. He's going to add to the church daily. If you will scan the little QR code that's on there, 
it's going to give you an opportunity to, to fill out a form, a little Google form. If you want to lead a reach group, we know some of you may not be prepared to do this today. Some of you have been thinking about it all, for a semester already. You knew what you wanted to do uh, this time. It's not hard. How many of us have a hobby? Raise your hand if you have a hobby and don't say work. You have a hobby outside of work. We need a hobby outside of work. That can be a reach group. How many of you like to read? If you like to read, you enjoy a good book, that can be a reach group. How many of you love to study some new content or context of the Bible? Topical stuff, that could be a reach group. It's not that hard. It's two or three people sitting around a table having a good conversation about life and the biblical context of where we're going. It's a handful of uh, guys playing cornhole and giving testimonies around the cornhole. It's, it's these types of things where relationships are built right here so that we can strengthen our relationships right here. One of the things that I had rolling through my mind this morning that I, that I, that I wanted to say, and I have to be careful, and I don't want to mess up any doctrinal things, but you know, I believe it's going to take community to stay saved. Like, I need people. Iron sharpens iron, the Bible says. And if I get stuck in my own little rut, Sister Annette, it's easy for me to fall away. If I don't have somebody challenging me or pushing me or reminding me, Jack, of what God has done for me and in me and wants to do through me, then it's easy for me to get lost in all my own thoughts and all the own, my own issues that I've got going on. We weren't created for that. We were created to help in his kingdom. Amen? So if you'll stand with me. First of all, let me ask you this. How many of you have had a life-changing moment as a result of reach groups. Like you, you were involved in a reach group. It helped you grow in your discipleship process. You didn't necessarily lead it. Go ahead and stand up. If, you, if you've been involved in a reach group that changed your life, look at this. Look at this. Life change happens as a result of relationships. Everybody stand with us. This morning's altar call is going to be just a little bit different. And we're not going to make you sign in blood right now that you're going to lead a reach group. We might do that next week. Actually, August 9th, we're not going to make you sign in blood. But August 9th is a Wednesday night. We're going to have a special meeting back here in the fellowship hall. For anybody who's interested in leading a reach group that maybe you've never, you've never led it before, you've got some questions, I'm going to tell you we have some phenomenal hub leaders uh, that help us. Sister Faith, of course, leads all the youth uh, groups. Um, Brother uh, Gintz and them run the outreach. Micah and Tori Poole back there, they help us with all of our family groups. Um, Gerald Hale helps us with the men's groups. And uh, Cassie helps us with the ladies' groups. These are, these are tremendous assets that our church has. You're never going to be alone in leading a reach group. You'll never be alone. We have, a, we have a structured system that helps support you, questions, people that are, that are willing to come and help be assistants if you need that. It's a great opportunity to cast that net. And that's all we have to do. So the altar call is a little different this morning. If you believe that we don't have to worry about building the church, that Jesus is going to do that, all right? In a minute, I want you to come forward. If you believe that God has commissioned each and every one of us to be and to make disciples, then I want you to come up. And then if you believe that the book of Acts church that, that is written about, that we read, we love, as Pastor said, we love Acts 238. That's our foundation. That's how we're going to get to heaven. That's our birth certificate. But if we believe that, we also believe verses 46 and 47 that says that if, if we do these things, if we're willing to break bread, come to church, break bread in our homes, that God will add to the church. If you believe that, I want you to come forward with us this morning. And let's unite as a church. You're not committing to lead a reach group by coming up here, okay? But if we as a unified body can say that we understand exactly what our pastor laid out to us this morning, that life change happens through relationships, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and upon that revelation, He will build His church. But if the people who are called by His name 
will live according to the great commission that he's given us if we will be and make disciples if we will commit to this net casting of reach groups that there's no telling how many souls are going to be saved as a result of the commitment that each and every one of us makes to reach groups do you believe that why don't we just throw our hands in the air right now and say God I receive the calling that our pastor talked about this morning. We know that you are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. And and on that foundation, God, you will build your church. We don't have to build a church. You will build your church, God. And God, you've commissioned me to be a disciple and to make disciples. And God, I know that only happens through relationships, God, as you speak to us, as you move on us, oh God. And Lord, I may not be as far as I want to be with you, but I'm further than somebody else, and I can help lead those people, God. Lord, and we know that according to your word, that the apostolic church was founded on this principle. They were, they were doing reach groups when reach groups weren't cool, God. And Lord, we know that you've empowered us today to open our homes to those that that want to grow in you, that need to grow in you, that that whether they are the, the prodigal son that knows the truth and knows how to get home, God, whether they're the lost sheep that just needs somebody to come find them, they know they're lost, they just need somebody to come reach for them, or God, whether they're the lost coin, God, whether they're lost and they don't know it and they don't know anybody to come get them, I pray that you let a special anointing flow everybody flow into every one of us in this room this morning God as we fulfill the calling and the commission that you have on our life through reach groups of God move in our hearts and our minds right now God show us what you would have us to do God to lead and co-lead or participate in reach groups this semester God in Jesus name in Jesus name why don't you pray with your uh, friend that's next to you if it's proper to do so you can put your hand on their back and let's unite in prayer as a church as a unified body to do what God has called us to do Oh, my God. 